day. Uh, we had roughly 180 uh, people uh, that came to the Hill, and I was very pleased to see that you were one of uh, the speakers, and, and thank you for your remarks. Uh, the Space Launch System continues to receive less than the authorized levels, yet NASA is supporting not one but three different commercial crew programs, and if I'm reading the President's proposed budget uh, correctly, he's proposing a 64 percent increase in funding for uh, commercial crew above the authorization bill level of $500 million, roughly from $500 million to uh, $800 million, if the information I have is accurate. Uh, that being the case, uh, why the big increase uh, for commercial crew but not a similar increase for space launch system being requested? Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. That's all right. <laughs> yeah, I, if Mr. Palazzo I, I, doesn't I, mind, I don't mind. No. <laughs> <laughs> Congressman, um, let me talk precise, exact numbers. If we took what we're requesting if in the increase for commercial crew, which is from uh, 525 million to 822 million, so 300 million dollars. If I added 300 million dollars to the SLS program, you wouldn't know it. Well, I was thinking more of the 64 percent. But figure. but that's that's <laughs> that's my point, sir. Is that you know it, it it depends on it depends on the on the numbers you use, and if you choose to use percentages, then percentage of of a number like 500 million may seem very big, it's not big at all. We are, we are trying to get close to the level that the President asked for uh, when, when he decided to fund the commercial crew program, which had not been done by any previous administration, uh, you know, to, to, to be quite candid. We have asked for, and I think Bill Gerstenmeyer, the head of the Human Exploration Operations Mission Directorate, has stated over and over that this is the amount of money that we need to deliver SLS on the date and time that we said, 2017 for the inaugural mission, uh, integrated with Orion, 2021 now for the asteroid mission perhaps, and, and I don't need more money than that. Um, you know, if, if you give me money to put against SLS, uh, against the vehicle, it means I can't put some money that I would ordinarily put against advanced booster program. Given our funding limitations, do you have a concern uh, that there may be some duplication of effort, particularly in as much as we're funding uh, three different uh, private sector contractors in the uh, commercial crew environment? Do, do you suggest keeping it at three or reducing it to two or reducing it to one? Congressman, our, our acquisition strategy, which we, we spelled out pretty well several years ago, and we had to modify because we didn't get the money requested, was that we would try to promote competition for as long as we could, and that at some point, which will be this summer, we are, this spring, we're going to issue a draft request for proposal. Uh, the vendors will have an opportunity to, to look at that, tell us what they think. We'll issue a final uh, request for proposal, proposal in the fall, and by, the, by next spring, we hope to be able to announce uh, who the commercial crew provider is going to be. My hope is that Congress will fully fund us to the $822 million level, and that may allow me to carry one and a half. Uh, it will not allow us to carry three vendors. If we go down to one, if I'm forced to go down to one provider at any time, there is no competition. Uh, and it is exactly as I am, it will be exactly as I am today with the Russians and Soyuz seats. There is no competition. Hey, they I'm, went I'm from 500 of, million. I, I'm, I'm sorry, running out of time. If the chairman would permit, I'll, I'll follow up one uh, final question. Hopefully it will be a, a brief answer because it will be a brief question. Uh, the word commercial has always been puzzling to me because I'm not very familiar with a commercial or private sector market for commercial crew. Uh, do you envision that commercial crew is in fact going to have as its primary, if not sole, customer of the United States government? I, I do not anticipate that. I, I, I believe industry when they say, when Boeing and Boeing's board of directors commit to a program as they have done with the commercial crew program, uh, they're betting on the come. Well, if you, I, if you have any studies that suggest that there truly is a private market out there for quote unquote commercial crew, if you could share it with me, I'd very much appreciate it. I, I, will, I will make an effort to get, to get some of the commercial companies to release the, what they provided to their boards of directors. I, I, I will try. Thank you, yes, sir. I now recognize Mrs. Wilson for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
Um, good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? It doing? is my understanding that uh, Congressman Kennedy mentioned STEM, and I, I'd just like to follow up because I'm concerned about uh, potential funding shortfalls with regard to STEM. As you know, training uh, a STEM workforce is essential to our economic competitiveness. And NASA's education programs, both within its mission directorates such as science and aeronautics, as well as within its Office of Education, have taken a significant hit in the FY 2014 budget proposal. It's a, decre a decrease of about 46 percent from FY 2012. Who made the decision on what education activities are proposed to be cut? Was the Interagency Committee on STEM involved? And what was OMB's role? Uh, Congresswoman, I, I can't tell you what OMB's role was, uh, but I can tell you what I did. Um, I have been intimately involved in, in the decisions within NASA on STEM education because I, I think most people will tell you no one is as passionate about STEM education as am I. Um, our decision was, after we listened to the proposal that came from the President that he wanted, as I said a little bit earlier, he wanted to find a, pro a way to make the programs effective, that uh, we would be able to measure the effect of the STEM education programs. Uh, we decided that we would go along with, with that effort. Um, we had already been part of the way down the road with CoSTEM that, that you mentioned. Uh, their report, I think, is supposed to come out this summer. and and we will integrate the work of CoSTEM, two years' worth, into the consolidation effort that's ongoing right now. So I can tell you what we did. We, we, we participated in the decisions. Um, I think what they did was across the board, uh, it was decided to take all educational outreach funds from, from the agencies, the STEM agencies, to consolidate them. Rather than to try to cherry pick, uh, they just, you know, I think we took everything. Ex except some special ones that I mentioned earlier that, that, that go to underserved uh, minorities and it, like MIRREP, EPSCOR, and, and then Space Grant, which covers everybody. Just to follow up, uh, what resources would the Smithsonian Department of Education and the NSF have as a part of the 2014 budget request to support infrastructure to work across government and to implement the proposed consolidation. How will that infrastructure compare to the proven structure that NASA has developed over time, which is supported through competitive selection and peer review to implement yes. STEM education and outreach, especially within the science mission directorate? How will you do that with a 46% yes. cut? Um, my agency is really good. We're the, we're the best place to work in government, and I don't mean that pejoratively or anything. What will happen with the consolidation is that what I can do every day, uh, bringing downlink TV from aboard the International Space Station, taking it into a classroom, every one of the STEM-related agencies will now have access to NASA content. So that's one of the things we're giving. We'll, we'll be allowing everybody else to have access to the content that we have. What it will give us, what we will gain, will be access to the Department of Education, to the, to the um, National Science Foundation, and even to the Smithsonian in some of their metrics and some of their methods for, for, for promoting and reaching people with STEM education. I think there's value on both sides. It's a, everybody gives, but everybody gets something if we do it right. One follow-up. Uh, who's going to oversee this? Who will oversee it? Which, the, the, which segment of government? The program is actually Department going. Of education, uh, the, the program is actually presently being overseen, overseen by the off, the executive office of the president. The president is, uh, you know, is the one that, that all of us are responding to in this. I, I'm overseeing with with uh, Leland Melvin as my as my emissary, if you will, uh, what we're doing in NASA, and um, and and, I, and every other principal. Uh, is quite well aware of what's going on and is and is taking part and we have all had an opportunity to to express our opinion about how things should be done. Uh, examples would be, you know, one of the things we proposed was take the people from each agency, each STEM agency who are good at what they do and put them in a pool so that when the Department of Education or the National Science Foundation or Smithsonian 
starts looking to build the cadre of people that are going to be the, the overseers, if you will, that we take people who, who, are, who have experience with this. And, and I express the desire and a willingness to, to offer NASA people anytime anybody wants to take them so that we make sure the program is done correctly. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, now, I now recognize Mr. Stewart for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, General, good to see you again. Always good to see you. It, it's been a pleasure uh, being on this committee and having a chance to get to know you a little bit. Uh, I, I'd like to be big picture if we could for all, and I certainly don't mean to beat a dead horse, and I don't think that we will, but help me if you could bring some clarity to, I think, some fundamental visions or, or goals of, of your organization. And that is with the asteroid retrieval missions, uh, what is the main objective or goal that you have there? And if I could maybe rephrase the question, help me understand why that was placed as a, as a priority over other uh, possibilities, uh, you know, say, for example, a, a, a manned moon mission. Congressman Stewart, it, it doesn't, I, don't, I would not say the asteroid mission replaces anything. We did not have a lunar mission in our portfolio. We, uh, we had a $17.7 .7 billion budget uh, it, with a notional out you know, five year out yeah. uh, that would not accommodate a, a lunar mission. I think it, it is in the record that if we went back and tried to replicate the lunar program that was in place under Constellation, I, I've asked and, and I'm told that Altair, the lander, is in the, in the eight to ten billion dollar range. I don't have eight to ten billion dollars to put into a lander for a lunar program. We already had uh, solar electric propulsion underway in our space technology mission directorate. Uh, we have had that for years. We think we can accelerate it with the funds that, that are coming, 40 million of the, of the funds that are coming out of the 105. Human exploration has been working for no less than three years on an asteroid type yeah. mission. Uh, so we're leveraging what we have been doing for years. As, uh, as Congressman Brooks mentioned, uh, SLS and MPCV were made for, for the human exploration part of an asteroid mission, it gives us an opportunity to demonstrate that vehicle and its capability, Orion's capability to go beyond the moon to deep space uh, long before we have to make an eight-month mission to Mars and hoping that our people will survive in that. Well, and I think actually, uh, General, you bring up my point, and that is, and this is actually my, my primary question, if your ultimate objective is to, is to go to Mars, and, and knowing that there's building blocks that are required to do that, technological building blocks along the way that you have to accomplish in order to do that, does a, a lunar mission or the asteroid retrieval, does, does either of those give you a more significant foundation to build on, if, if that is your objective? You, you asked the question a little bit differently than was asked earlier, and I thought about it. Uh, the chairman told me to think about it again and come out and say, I forget, forget about the asteroid mission. I'm, I'm not ready to do that yet. Um, there is a decided advantage in an asteroid retrieval mission on the road to Mars. Solar electric propulsion is something we have got to have for deep space exploration. We, people have heard us say, we are looking for game-changing propulsion. Solar electric propulsion has been around for a while, but not the way we want to use it. Uh, there are varieties, you know, solar electric propulsion is a big name for a lot of different things you can do, hall thrusters, ion thrusters, vasimer. Um, that's one thing. Um, life support systems in the Orion module. Uh, I, I don't need to change the life support. I could, I could take the existing life support system in the, you know, in the first Orion and go to the moon. So there is no technological advantage there. If I want to push technology, I want to go to deep space. I want to go somewhere where it's really, really, really challenging. And if we don't get it right, we're going to lose people. And I appreciate uh, that. Then, yeah. then if I could, in, in the minute or so that I have left, are there, you've given some great examples of technologies which are developed with this mission. Are there any technologies that we sacrifice or that we would develop with a, another lunar mission that would not be developed in the... In the it, it, it's not a matter of sacrificing technologies. It, it is a matter of using, requiring no new technology. Uh, you know, we must remember. <laughs> This is the greatest nation in the world in terms of exploration of the universe. Uh, we have been to the moon six times. We know how to do that. Now, 
Dr. Gilruth, who most of you don't know, once said at the end of the Apollo program, people will realize how difficult it was to go to the moon when we try to return. So just because we went once doesn't mean it's going to be easy the next time. I don't need any new technology to go to the moon. I need money to go to the moon. It, it, it is expensive to go into a gravity well of the lunar surface. I need new technologies to go to an asteroid in deep space or in a stable orbit rendezvous point around the moon. And we are